Welcome back everyone, this is Mondo All Day, back with another video, and in this video, I'll be doing an overview of Annihilation Omnibus by Marvel Comics. Yes, I know, Marvel Comics, I'm sure some of you are surprised, I mainly do DC stuff, but look, I do like some Marvel, just very, very little. But, anyways, as always, I'll be talking about a little bit of the art, the story, and of course, if it's worth the purchase or not. Before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button to not support channel, but to keep up to date and watch videos like this. So, let's take a look at front of the dust jacket, which is pretty cool art piece, the spine, the back. All right, let's take a look at underneath the dust jacket and I can take this off and put this to the side. Foot of the book, the spine, the back, and I'll do a full spread image. Pretty cool art piece. All right, so what is this book about? Now, actually, one thing I, before I get started, I noticed, look, coming from a DC collector and reader, uh, the pages are pretty th thick, I guess you can say, and with Marvel omnibuses or paper quality, they're pretty thin. I mean, the quality is really good, but it's just really thin, something that I noticed. Though. But anyways, so, let's on to the book, and what is this book about? So, the gist of the book, or this whole entire omnibus, is mainly about a character named Annihilus, Annihilus? And he's basically the Lord of the Negative Zone. And essentially what it is, is this individual, this character, I believe they pronounce it Annihilus, Annihilus, can't even pronounce it, is in an all-out war. So meaning he's going up against anyone who's in his path. He does have an objective, which I won't say because I will spoil pretty much the, the book. But essentially he's an all-out war against anyone in his path and anyone who interfere with his objective or goal. That's like the main gist of the entire book. And so the way this omnibus is, is categorized, I guess you could say, is the perspective of each character. So there's different stories for each character. So there's a story of Drax, Nova, Silver Surfer, Super Scroll, Ronin, Herald of, of, of Galactus. And so usually when I do my overviews of books, I usually talk about the story and give my opinion. So for this one, I'm just going to give you my, I'm going to break down each story for each character and give you my thoughts and opinion of each um, story and character. So, with that said, the main first story is going to be Drax. The Drax story is pretty straightforward. It's mainly of him crash landing on Earth, and he needs to gather some things so that way he can basically go back to space and do what he wants to do. Which, again, I won't spoil it because it does collect one through four, only four issues of this story. And I gotta say, I really, really like the story. I really like the character and the banter between Drax and Cammy. Cammy is a little girl right here, and her banter and the relationship they have each with each other with Cammy and Drax is really, really good. And it's, it's really like a brother and little sister type of relationship where they tease one another. The banter between them two is really, really, really good, and the chemistry is really good. And so to me, the Drax story is really, really fun, especially once Drax you know, gets to meet with Cammy and just the interaction between them two throughout the whole entire omnibus is really really good the main his main story is like i said he just lands on earth he wants to go back to space to do what he wants to do which i won't say because i'll spoil it and so for the most part i gotta say the drag story it's good I, I can't complain on it it's not bad it's not amazing it's just good all around all around but what i like about it though is the character cammy because cammy is kind of a bad i don't want to say a badass but a little bit troublemaker but they do give her background story and you feel sympathetic for her you know what happens to her and how she was raised which i won't say but for the most part though the drag stories i really really dig and i really 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 enjoy now the next story is going to be if i can fast forward a little bit here it's going to be the nova Corps. and so the nova store story is mainly about a character obviously nova or richard Ryder. basically he is a new recruit in the nova Corp. and one thing leads to another he is facing off against analysis and Alice's army and this whole entire story of Nova is mainly just Nova Corp going up against analysis and I like that because it really shows the brute force of this particular army and how powerful they are because they eviscerate the Nova Corp I mean demolish them like no other and it's really awesome kind of sad at the same time but it's really good seeing basically a really powerful Nova Corp the Nova Corp essentially getting demolished just like that. It's really cool and there's so, so much action in this story and I really dig. But 
the cool thing about it is the way they wrote the story where essentially it's Richard Ryder, who was, a, like I said, a recruit, a Nova Corp, but it shows a little bit of his origin story. But more, more importantly, it's just even though he's like a powerful being, because if you don't know, Nova is really, really powerful. It really shows there's more layers to him. He's not just one big, powerful, you know, OP character. He does have some, you know, he's scared. And they show that in his story where there's one part of the story where he's intimidated. Even Drax recognizes him and kind of calls him out like, hey, man, like, you know, why don't you step up, you know, tie your shoes, do what you have to do. And Nova hesitates. Richard Ryder hesitates because of, I won't say too much, I'll spoil it. But that's what I like about it is that this story does great character development for Richard Ryder and the Nova character. To you feel sympathy for him, but you also understand his point of view of how he feels, how he, what is going on, which I won't say. But you really see the character arc, and I really like this story, especially with all this going. Just look at this. This whole story is mainly just Nova getting obliterated, Nova Corp getting obliterated, but also seeing the character arc of Nova. So to me, this is a really good story, and I really, really dig the story. Again, the chemistry between Drax, Cammy, and Richard Ryder this is really, really good. Just three of them, too. The banter between them three is really really good and awesome so to me i really like the story the next one is going to be if i can find it is if i can find it here we go it's going to be silver surfer now with silver surfer story it's pretty straightforward it's mainly of silver surfer seeing the damage and the outcome of annihilation and, and or not annihilation but analysis in his army and what they've they've done and all the damage that they've caused and deaths and it's mainly him just realizing, oh my god, this is bad. I gotta speak to my master. If you don't know who his master is, it's gonna be Galactus. So he goes out and seeks Galactus for help to, you know, to prevent what's coming. I can't say too much because I'll spoil the story. But for the most part, Silver Surfer's story is okay. It's similar to Drag's. It's cool. There's some cool parts to it. There's some cool moments where you really see Silver Surfer being a badass. But for the most part, though... Eh, I mean, there is a bit of a more to the story, which I won't say, because, again, it's, it'll spoil it, and plus it's really, really short. It's only four issues. So, for the most part, though, I say it's an okay story. It's really cool seeing Silver Surfer, like I said, seeing in action. But more importantly, seeing his master, which is, of course, Galactus. So, to me, nothing amazing happens in the Silver Surfer story, but I had a good time with it, nonetheless, though. The next one, sorry, is the one I really, really really liked it's gonna be the super scrolls this story completely caught me off guard i from my understanding he is a villain correct me if i'm wrong look i mainly do dc stuff so going into marvels you know i to be honest with you, i didn't recognize any a lot of these characters so i do remember seeing this character being a villain but anyway so after reading this book i mean this book the story I love Super Scroll. So what is his story about? Mainly it's a story of basically Super Scroll is his people and gets annihilated by Annihilus and he essentially wants to seek revenge for his people, but more importantly seek revenge for his, his child. And he basically one badass story of him just being a badass. It's just mainly him just going up against this entire army by himself. He's willing to do anything and everything he can to defend his people or avenge his people and protect his son. And that is the main gist of his story. Again, it's only four issues. I won't say too much. But for the most part, though, this is probably the story that I enjoy the most. The story is fantastic from beginning, middle to end. There's character development to this character. There's actually depth to this character, too. Again, I thought he was a villain. But he is a villain, but also there's more to him. It's not just, okay, I hate people, I'm a bad person. That's it. There's more to it. There's motivation behind them and his actions. And you understand it. And the way they write it, you feel sympathy for him. You actually understand what he, why he does what he does. Because there's parts where he tortures someone. Like uh, one of analysis, like like troops, he tortures them like crazy. And when that happens, you kind of agree with him. You're like, you know, you should tr torture him. But that's how good the writing is. Where you even start going along with the villain. That tells you how good the writing is. And so to me, this is probably the best story out of all the entire thing here. And I really, really like the story. The next one, which is probably the weakest one, and it's going to be Ronan the Accuser. I personally, I, I don't remember too much about the story. 
the what I got out of it, basically, it is Ronin. He's at a certain planet, and he sends a certain energy that's off. He ends up fighting up, fighting off against Gamora, but while he's fighting Gamora, he notices something's off, and the energy in this planet is off, and it's some person altering the energy. To be honest with you, I was a bit confused on this story, and I this is probably the weakest one out of all of them. I was lost. I, I'm going to be honest, I didn't really get it too much. But I will say this, though. It does make Ronin look badass. Because he did come off in this in this story. He did come off really like a, looking like a badass. And I I liked him even more because he looks like a badass. And he does a lot of badass things. But for the most part, his story, I just kind of like, eh, okay, whatever to me. I mean, it does kind of lead into a, the main story. But for the most part, though, it was just like, whatever, okay, that's cool. It is what it is, though. So to me, this is the weakest one. Now the other story is going to be Heralds of Galactus. There's just two issues, and mainly what it is, just the origins of his, of Galactus's heralds, and of course the way it ends it ends with the sequel to this omnibus, which is Annihilus Conquest. And so overall, though, what do I think about this omnibus? I gotta say that I really like this omnibus. Coming from a DC fan to Marvel, uh, I was a bit worried I wasn't going to understand a lot of these characters or the story, but for the most part. Never got lost. I, from beginning, minute to end, I really liked it. Except for like, the Ronin story. But I was never lost. And that's what I like about it. Is that you don't have to have prior knowledge to like Marvel. If you've watched the MCU. A majority of the MCU movies. Especially the Guardians of the Galaxy. You'll be fine. Because they talk about Drax. Which is Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Ronin. Guardians of the Galaxy. Gamora. Nova. They do mention in the Guardians of the Galaxy. So if you watch Guardians of the Galaxy movies. they are perfectly fine you won't be lost so if you're an MC, mcu fan and you want to get into marvel comics i would recommend getting analysis omnibus great stories good character development with a lot of stories especially super scroll and just really good background to each character showing how badass they are even though ronin like i didn't really like the story his stories up is really looks makes him look really really cool really a badass and that's what I like about it. Because in the movie, they may kind of look like a little bit of an idiot towards the end. But in this story, though, he is a badass. And he comes off as a badass. He comes off like a leader. He knows what he's doing. And that's what I like about his story. But for the most part, the story itself is like, eh. So to me, do you need to have prior knowledge? No. Again, coming from a DC fan, I went into it knowing nothing. Perfectly fine. The art itself is pretty good. Some people don't like it. It looks kind of like outdated. To me, I like the art. It looks clean. There are some really cool parts where the action just looks really, really cool. And I dig the art. I can see some people complain. Like I said, the art's update. But for the most part, to me, no complaints at all. I really, really like the, the art from beginning, middle to end. In terms of the pacing, it's fairly quick. Uh, and that's what I noticed. Yes, the first issue of each story, it does slow down a little bit to play like average. But for the most part, though, I would say it's... It's above average. And again, the pacing is good too throughout the book. The art's good. The paper quality is gl glossy, so it is what it is. Though. But overall, though, what do I think about it? I gotta say, man, no, the Nova Core, the Annihilation Ombus is easily a thumbs up for me. Good stories on here, good pacing, good art, and you don't need to have prior knowledge to any Marvel comic story or anything. You can just buy this book, read it. And you're ready to go to go. And the cool thing is it does have, towards the end, even throughout the whole book, if you noticed, it does have what they call it the Nova Corps files. And basically what it is, is I'll show you guys right here. It gives you like origins of characters. So if you're like, wait, who is this character? It gives you just like the origins of it, like encyclopedia. Describing you the home world, their name, and their background, and their threat level and power level. Which is really cool. I like, I like to have that because then for me as a DC fan... I can read, for instance, let's say you are you don't know who Ronan the Accuser is, boom, read it on here. It gives you the background, his weapons, his abilities, the threat level, and so forth. And throughout the whole book, they have that, which is really, really cool. And I think I really, really like that. I hope they do that with more Marvel stuff. But for the most part, though, and what do I think about it? Easily thumbs up for me. Would I recommend it? Absolutely. I had a great time with this Omnibus. And to me, this Omnibus, Annihilation Omnibus, easily a thumbs up for me. Let me know what you guys think. Have you read this book? Do you plan on reading this book? Leave it in the comment section below. As always, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn that support channel, but to keep up today and watch videos like this. 
So that concludes an overview of Annihilation Omnibus and on to the next one.